You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Dexter After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. Uh, and now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Dexter After Show. Oh yeah, everybody. Thing is for doing, and here we are doing another amazing AfterBuzz TV After Show for your favorite show, Dexter. We're on Season 8, Episode 7, Dress Code. I'm your host, Shano, and I'm joined here by my awesome co-hosts, I'm Anna Koppel. And I'm Stephen Lemieux. And we're going to be talking about the following topics tonight. Zach kills Cassie. What a shocker. I think we predicted that last time. Uh, Hannah McKay's return. We're going to be discussing Quinn and Jamie deciding to move in together. They're, deci they're opting in to move in together. Uh, Elway and Deb and their relationship and how that's kind of taken a little bit of a turn around the corner. And lastly, Masuka and Nikki and what's going on with them. So let's go ahead and start off talking about uh, Zach killing Cassie. So pretty much not too big of a shocker. He bludgeoned her the same MO as what's been happening with, well, what happened with uh, Norma Rivera. Am I right, guys? Well, yeah, and Zach's whole arc this episode has been to show that he can't control himself, to show his uncontrollable urges and how they're emerging in him. And it's just kind of, it reminds me of like a, it's a, it is a teacher and student thing. Like, I know you can do this, but still blowing it off. It's just like, I know you can do your homework, but you still end up not doing it. That kind of thing, where he just ends up going against Dexter and doing it anyway. Yeah, Vogel brings up a really interesting point when uh, Dex and him are having a little conversation. She's like the go-to person for everybody to be counseled by, and we get to, like, reveal their thoughts about what's going on, which is pretty interesting. But do you ever wonder why, though? I, I'm like, when Deb goes to her this episode, I'm like, why the hell is Deb talking to Vogel? Well, she's the only one. She's, I'm sure she's doing it for free, too. Oh, like, well, that, that, that's probably it. That's probably it. <laughs> I, I don't think that that's probably it. It's, you can't go to just any therapist and be like, okay, listen, so my brother's a serial killer. I helped him kill these people. And now, like, he's raising this other serial killer. I, I mean, you know, Vogel knows everything. And whether or not she's charging, I think, is really not the main issue. I think it's that they can be honest with her. Yes, th thank you, Anna, for bringing that up. We totally forgot that <laughs> I, it's not normal to kill people <laughs> right, in the real I mean, world. I know that this is a very obvious point, but I feel like we're skipping over it somehow. Yeah. She's probably not charging them. That's probably why they're going. Yeah, we, we it's always... Probably, it's probably not it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> You're right, Anna. Thank you. Um, you know. But, yeah, there was... There was that scene where Dexter and Zach are having the conversation behind uh, one of the evidence trucks when uh, when Zach leaves the, the department after he gets Quinn in trouble, right? And right then, it was so funny because Zach was being so aggressive with and, and like stoic, well, being a little brat pretty much, being a little ass with Quinn and everybody else in the department. But when he sees Dexter, he's like giddy as a schoolboy trying to please his teacher, am I right? It, it, what did you guys think of that scene? Well, it's like the one thing that you've always wanted to do, and then you meet someone who's a professional doing at that. I mean, it's kind of, kind of like, oh my god, hey. So I, 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 I don't know. It's 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 interesting in that, yeah, he's giddy like a schoolgirl, but at the same time, he you'd think that he would be obeying him more than just trying to impress. Like, does he really think that killing Cassie is going to impress his teacher? Like, if anything, I, I would assume that would put him back on Dexter's table. No, I feel like he did that out of impulse. Co yeah. That was complete impulse. And he even, he walked by and he's had such aggression in him. But I didn't think that he would take it out on Cassie right then. But you know, even though we did talk about that this was probably going to happen, I didn't think it was going to happen this episode. It, it moved pretty fast. Um, I I feel like this is just going to be a way for to to 
to accelerate. Yeah, to accelerate his plans and even change his plans because I don't think he's going to want to teach him now. If he finds out, and I'm sure he really suspects that Zack did this. Oh, I'm sure he knows. Yeah, then it's it's the same mo. So he he's going to just put him back on his table and he's going to kill him later on. Well, we're talking about this scene with the ambulance, and Dexter and Zack. I want to throw something out there that I thought was kind of weird. When when Miles is talking to Dexter at the gas pump, he says, I saw you with your son. Yeah. So the only time I could think of him seeing Dexter with someone who could possibly be his son is Zach. And I'm wondering if the people who work with Miles will take his disappearance out on Zach. Hmm. That's like one prediction I, I was yeah. thinking of during the show, because if they think Zach's his son, I'm wondering where the fallback would be to Dexter to Miles' disappearance. And I guess we'll talk about that more later, but I just thought it was interesting that, like, I can't think of any other time where his PIs would have seen Dexter with someone who's like a son-like figure to him. Yeah. It's, just, it's interesting. That's what you picked up on. I mean, I, I heard that in that scene, too, but what I wrote down um, is he said people are so impatient. Somebody had honked at him. And that was right after the scene where Dexter was telling Zach that he needs to learn patience. So I don't know if that ties in together, it, if that's on purpose or... Yeah, that's a really good point you bring up, Anna. And that, that reminds me, or that makes me think of what... You know, there's, there's too much of an obvious connection there with the impatience, with Dexter's conversation, and then Miles bringing that up. So maybe... I'm sure Miles is a powerful man. I'm sure he had his hired goons following Dexter around, and they, they probably got directional mics on him, listening to all his conversations, and he just wants to get intel on Dexter and find out what he can use against him, and that was probably one of the things. Well, another thing would probably be that he showed up at this club, and it's it was actually kind of interesting what you said about the impatience line, because now that I think about it, Dexter has been trying to teach Zach, and he keeps trying to teach them all the, his, these things, like, of course, we can't be seen in public, that wouldn't be good, da 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 and then he just goes right, because of his impatience, he breaks his own rules and makes Zach be seen in public going after Miles and Hannah, and then doesn't leave when, when Miles is coming back. And that's just, okay, well, I mean, you're not, he's not going to follow your rules if you don't follow your rules. Yeah, De Dexter is not a good teacher. He, at the end of the episode, he mentions two, two killers together is never going to be a good thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Harry was a human, so he was, well, Dexter's human too, but at least from his perspective, Harry was the typical kind of civilized human, and he was able to, con obviously he didn't kill people randomly. He didn't kill people because he didn't feel that urge. So he was able to tell Dexter, hey, you gotta hold off on this, you gotta hold back. He was always the yin to Dexter's yang. But we got two, got two guys here now that are the same side of the coin. We got Dexter and Zach, and it's, it's really not gonna end up well, I feel. Well, and, and that's exactly right, that Harry was, a very disciplined person. He was able to discipline Dexter in that way. And, you know, Dexter struggles with disciplining himself, with fighting his own urges, and with being patient himself and dealing with that. So to try to teach somebody else that kind of discipline when you struggle with it that much yourself, I think, uh, yeah, maybe it doesn't work out very Slightly well. Slightly hypocritical. It's, it's like sure. being a parent. You know, like you have yeah. to show the kids your example instead of telling them. De Dexter's doing, he's raising two kids right now. He's raising Zach to be a killer, a, a successful killer who's able to be under the radar. And he, he's not, and even with, uh, even with Harrison, a couple episodes ago, he was like, Daddy, you lied to me. And he caught his dad in a lie. So that's why he's lying too. So Dexter's just failing on all of his fronts as a father right now. Well, it's, it's kind of interesting because he can't really lead by example for Harrison's case because. If he did, then Harrison would be taking people and plastic bagging them and throwing them off the side of a yacht by the time he's 15. So it's Harrison's trying to follow his the mask that Dexter puts on, but he's too close to Dexter to not notice when the mask is off. So I think it's going to be interesting to see where what Harrison ends up at the end of the season, like what kind of care, where his arc goes, because I know they're giving him slightly of an arc, especially with oh we have the imaginary elephant in the room. Which I love the, yeah. I love the saying with that because it's yeah, y yeah you you get it. But um, they're doing more with Harrison that are very subtle, like subtle things, and they don't bring them up episode to episode. But there's just a different thing epi episode to episode. So by the end of the season, I'm hoping we see all of these slight subtleties come into something with his with Harrison. Now uh, regarding uh, Zach, uh, I also wanted to bring up. 
uh, his his antagonism and what's going on between Quinn and Matthews and him because it's a very interesting little triad they got going on there in that relationship. So Zach comes in and he wants he wants Quinn off of him, obviously because he's been told by Dexter, hey, you're being followed all the time. You can't go out and do these things. So he uses his position of power as this rich kid to tell Matthews, who's got good connections with the Hamilton family of Florida, of Miami, Florida, to drop the drop. Quinn from spying on him pretty much from following him all the time and Matthews it totally gets all over Quinn about it your thoughts well I was just gonna say yeah but that was so arrogant of him and and because he had already told Dexter followed by who Quinn he's he's easy enough to lose so I don't know if he was lying to Dexter he's trying to like show off he's a big shot I can get rid of this detective uh, or what but I think it was very arrogant in in both cases with both Dexter and and in the police station Miami Metro I thought it was stupid of Zach to say the least Because Dexter says like it's easy to lose if you have someone who's following you who's very easy to lose The worst thing you want to do is force them to not be able to follow you in that way and follow Quinn, him at all Yeah, and F Quinn is the kind of person who okay. I can't do this anymore all right, well, like we've seen in, what was it, season three or four, where, okay, well, I'll hire a PI to do it for me, to do a loophole. Quinn, if he's not following you the easy way, he's going to follow you the hard way, and you're, that's when Dexter said, like, I mean, Dexter says, yeah, but what if he's there when you don't expect him? And that's what's going to happen, is okay. we're going to have, Qu Quinn's probably going to catch Zach, Dexter and Zach's in some situation, probably not something incriminating, but putting two and two together wouldn't be hard for Quinn at this point. Yeah, and Quinn, Quinn has such a belligerent personality. He overdoes everything, pretty much. He overdid his drinking all the time in the last couple of seasons. Uh, he's, he's, he's overdoing this. He's spending all of his free time. When he's not working and he's not with Jamie, he's spending all his free time tailing Zach. And it's sad to see Batista put in this position. Yeah. Because, I mean, this is the guy he really wanted to make, to have Sergeant. Speaking of Sergeant, we didn't see Miller at all this episode. No, we didn't. Um... And, oh, yeah, didn't she say that she kind of disappears and then comes back? I think she may have. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, we, she mentioned it last time. But he's, he's already kind of La Guerta ing a bit. Mm -hmm. Like any other case, I'd say that you're right because his detective bells are ringing. Yeah. But it's this case. He's the administration now. He's a lieutenant. He's up at the top. He can't make all these gut calls anymore. He's got to do what's best for the department. And if the deputy chief, who's right above him, is telling him, hey, you got to let this one go, you give the order down to your detectives, he's got to make it happen. Otherwise, his job as a lieutenant's got to be in jeopardy. I'm just wondering how the f how Matthews will fall this season. Yeah. I don't, he may, I don't think he's going to fall. I don't think there's very much going on with him. Other than the other than the Hamilton thing, there's there's no, no connection to anything else. I feel. I don't know. I feel like well, we're seeing him more. That's that's why I have a feeling something big will happen within the season, but I'm not sure. But I don't know. Zach is Zach is annoying. <laughs> yeah. You know what though? I I've, really quickly on it before before your point. I wanted to say he's actually growing on me up until what he did at the end. He I felt like he was growing on me. He's. When we first saw him, I felt like he was super creepy, and we all talked about that on our on our shows. But I feel like I'm starting to see that he could, if there's a possible movie coming up, he could be someone that could potentially be in the movie. Maybe they were probably grooming him for that. I don't know. Like I could see his type of a character as like a Dexter legacy going forward, just the way he is. But after what he did, him losing control in this episode, I, I don't think there's any way now. Anyway, Anna? I was just going to say that, you know, there's five episodes left now, and there are just so many characters, and they keep introducing characters mm -hmm. and then killing them, I guess. But, <laughs> but I, I'm just really eager to see how they wrap all of this up. I'm eager to actually see a storyline that more, survives. Something that's more <laughs> linear? No, something that, I mean, the greatest seasons of Dexter have storylines where... You have brackets that, of course, open up and end themselves, but you still have that main thick line that kind of helps you along where you're looking forward to that. It gives you something like, oh, man, I can't wait for the end of the season. I can't wait for the end of the season because he'll mm -hmm. finally get this guy who's always been eluding him. And this season doesn't have that. It doesn't have a strong antagonist. It doesn't. And that's what I feel it's missing because we're getting too many of these things. Like Vogel was 
this woman who appears and then we all hate Vogel and then she just kind of takes a sideline. You're like, okay, well, why did we even have those first five episodes? To introduce Zach, okay, well, Zach's here now and he's already pissing us off. I mean, we don't even see him living through the next three episodes. So who, who are they going to introduce the main protag or antagonist like on episode nine or ten? I mean, it's it's looking like it's going to be Hannah or something like that, but it's just, I don't know, it's, it's the season's pacing is really weird to me. And I know it's because it's a, the final season of this show, but it's just really, I feel like I would have liked something more familiar and more, more like Dexter. This is Dexter. This is, this is Dexter. And then end it on a great note. I did have a feeling like that, Stephen, when it came to the end of the episode, like the final minutes where... Dexter comes into uh, Cassie's apartment and he checks and sees all the blood everywhere. He sees the body. When the music starts going, it it was totally the music from season one. You know, mm -hmm. and they haven't been playing it that much in the in the previous seasons, but this what they're like bringing it back for me. That's what I felt. There, it was the music, the darkness, the somberness of the episode, and Dexter making that deep dark realization about what he's doing is probably not on the right path. Well, what I really feel like they're doing is they're turning Zack into the main antagonist, and they're having Vogel be the voice in Dexter's head, trying to assuage him from wanting to kill Zack. And then we have Dexter, of course, having that kind of feeling that he should, but at the same time he wants to teach him. And I really think that's going to backfire on him, and that's what we're going to be getting for the next five episodes, especially from the previews with Zack having his own kill room things, kind of like that. I think Zach's going to be very difficult to get to because of his money and because of how well he's going to end up knowing Dexter. Yeah, and, De and Deputy Chief Matthews would be really pissed if something ends up happening to the Hamilton family, I'm sure. Yeah, I f there's also a connection with that. The, the Father Hamilton, I forgot his name, and Matthews, because Ma Hamilton. Father Hamilton, yeah. Because <laughs> Matthews had that whole ordeal with the stripper, and now we have Matt or Hamilton, who's... Doing the, the housekeepers. Exactly. <laughs> He, he, he's, he's housekeeping. <laughs> Let's go ahead and fast yeah. forward and, and talk about Hannah McKay's return. She's so, back. She's back. She's with a rich dude, a seven, net worth of $700 million, Miles Kastner. Am I right, Anna? That's correct. Did you look up the actor who ended up playing him? I tried. I was not successful. Well, if you know, you can tweet us. Yeah, you guys yeah. could <laughs> surely tweet at us. Um, uh, you can tweet at me, at Sean Austin O. Uh, you can tweet at Stephen Lemieux, and... You can tweet at me at Koppel for Mayor. And while you're tweeting, you can pull out that phone box thing that you're using, and you can go to iTunes, and you can search After Buzz Dexter. We're the first podcast that you'll see, and you can give us five stars, fill out a little review, say how much you love Sean, and say how much you love or dislike me, and then say <laughs> how much you love Anna, and say that... Who doesn't love Anna? Oh. And then uh, lots of people, lots and lots and lots. Give of a shout out to JJ. We're sorry she couldn't be here with us tonight. Oh, but love you, JJ. Yeah, we, we love, love you. You guys send some love her way. Um, she just had uh, a member of her family pass away. Uh, her her wonderful wonderful dog just passed away last night. So we hope that JJ is doing better and send some love at her at JJ Jurgens on Twitter. She's with us in spirit. She is. She is. Well, um, while you're on the iTunes. Uh, store you can also type into the search bar serial buddies and that will bring up this awesome film independently uh, uh, directed and written by Kevin Undergaro starring Maria Menounos it's got Christopher Lloyd Christopher McDonald Artie Lang bunch of funny people in it and it, it's pretty much Dexter meets Dumb and Dumber mixed together and you, you guys will enjoy it it's just it's what is it Steven it's the price of a happy meal right less than price that. of a happy meal <laughs> And, uh, and it helps us keep the lights on here. So you guys, go ahead. You can help us out at After Buzz TV, keeping the lights on. Download Serial Buddies today. Anyway, let's talk about uh, Hannah McKay's return. Let's continue talking about that. So she, she comes back. She's got, she's got this rich guy taking care of her. I was curious about her motivation. Like, right when the episode opens up, Dexter's in the middle of a field near, like, a swampy body of water. And... Well, there was like, I'm questioning for like half the episode, why the hell did she drug them? What was the point to that? And, you know, she gets a reveal later on. <laughs> She's shaking your head over there, right, Steven? Why the hell are they bringing her back <laughs> is my question. Well, I, I see, if Hannah ends up being the main antagonist, that would make sense because we know enough about her and there's enough of... Uh, 
I, I guess. I don't but. see it making sense, though, be, as her being the main antagonist, because Dexter's in love with her. What, and she said she changed her mind. She doesn't want to manipulate him. At least that's what she's saying. But that's a manipulation. Exactly. It, it the well whole be. time I'm watching that, I'm like, I'm, you're probably thinking the exact same thing. Like, he's she's manipulating. Like, yeah. Plainly he, manipulating him. That's what makes her such a great antagonist. Okay, if I was to change my mindset, and I will right now, so this whole thing is a manipulation, and it ends up being that the the only reason she had Dexter end up killing, or not, or helping with the kill, clean up everything later on, was she made these like chess moves that way, you know, thinking a few moves ahead, go into the greenhouse, knowing that she's being watched, so that Miles could get jealous. She would give. A reason now a motivation to make it clear to Dexter oh hey I tried to get away he was trying to kill me or even it looked like he was even trying to rape her to, just to control her more mm -hmm. and uh, she they gave her a reason to kill him and make it okay to Dexter like hey I'm not just I was defending myself the only flaw I find with that is the way he was killed she could have made it look like she was defending herself whether she was or not and Hannah is such an in control woman that I don't think that that was part of her plans for him to. But see, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's, that I wrote that down in my notes, is that, see, we don't have to speculate on that because we got to see that scene. Mm -hmm. And they, they gave us, the audience, the satisfaction of seeing him do that to her. Exactly. Right. And and I wrote that down. I was like, well, Hannah's not in control for once. Yeah. And, and, uh, and that was new. But then, oh, wait, yes, she is because she ends up killing him. But we don't have to speculate. Did he attack her or didn't he? He did push the buttons, in, at least in that scene physically, he was doing stuff to her. But I don't, well, do you think that she told him that she killed people, like really killed people? I would have thought at that point that he, well, as Miles, he probably hasn't killed anybody himself with his own hands. So he's gonna be able to control her, hit her, smack her around, whatever, up to a, up to a certain point. But he won't cross that line. He won't probably kill her, but she's killed a lot of people, so that's what makes it so much easier for her. Well, you got to remember, what was the reason she was put away to jail? She was put away to jail because Dexter gave the pen that had the poison on it to the police. So she's only really was arrested for the murder of the author of the book. And so he knows, of course, that she killed him. But I don't think he knew knows that much about Dexter, and I don't think she would have told him about most of her past or anything like that. So I think all he knows is that he was her story from the Randall case in the beginning, because of course she says that she met him a few years earlier doing a flower preparation for him, and he found her intriguing. So I'm sure he knew from that, but I'm, I'm not. I don't think that he knew that much about Dexter. Otherwise, he would not have. With with a guy who's got a. A net worth of that much. This, this successful businessman who has hired goons. You don't think he would have done a thorough background check into Hannah McKay to see what she really did or what she was like accused of doing? No, that's the thing. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He he knows what she did, yeah. but she he, she he doesn't know to the extent of her connection with Dexter because of it. Ah, he only knows that he's he poisoned the author to protect someone, and he only knows that she was the girl who was with Randall on the murder spree. He doesn't know, I don't think he knows to the extent that Dexter knows that she enjoyed it, that she was, well, I guess, I don't know if she really enjoyed it, whatever. I don't think he really knows that she killed her husband, her previous husband. So, I mean, I, I don't think that he knew a lot. Well, anyway, regarding the yeah, whole- Yeah, it's all speculation. Yeah, re regarding, what's his name? Kastner, Miles Kastner getting killed. Uh, we see that, that Deb, follows Dexter and Hannah to Dexter's boat's slice of life. He dumps the body. This is now, you, you notice, Stephen, this is now the third person that's gone on Dexter's boat with him. This whole thing, I'm just like, Dexter, really? Like, he's so sloppy. <laughs> he it's is like, he's just, he's just like, hey, here's my open Dexter door. Walk right through. Learn everything you can about me. Yeah, it's like he's ready to retire or something. Seriously. He just it's... doesn't want to quit. God. Yeah, he is just... It reminds me of someone who works at a job so long that they just don't really... They don't. They just start losing the details. Like, okay, here's my checklist. Every day, go down the checklist. But then, as you get down, you're like, oh, I remember the checklist, and you start losing things. And Harry's code is kind of deteriorating. Hey, I do that all the time. 
<laughs> no, but um, I feel like half of the episode, Dexter was denying to himself and to others that he wasn't, it, he just kept going after her. Like you said, he kept making mistakes and going after Hannah. And he, he was just giving himself like false reasons to go to her. But he really is still in love with her. No one else can compare. Oh, yeah. To how she affected him. Yeah. And she affects him emotionally in the way that on the same level as Trinity's killing of Julie affected him. In, in, in On an opposite spectrum, if that makes sense to you. Because... Trinity connected with him emotionally by killing what was closest to him to show that he has emotions. That was kind of the first, like, I actually have emotions of a human thing. And now this is another emotion that he's coming into contact with. He's actually in love because he was not in love with his wife. He's in love with Hannah. Yeah. So this is another thing that they're throwing at you in this whole Vogel storyline if you connect the two because Vogel is telling him you have no human emotions You have no connection. That's real to your sister. It's just she helps you and that's why you're here But this is an illogical connection. Hannah doesn't really help Dexter. She harms him. She she stresses his relationship with Deborah. So the fact that he loves her kind of I'm gonna I'm gonna, we're probably gonna see something like Vogel and Hannah Hitting, hitting at each butting, other, butting heads. butting heads a little bit, and probably not face to face, but through Dexter, with Vogel telling, trying to confuse Dexter again, because she just likes to confuse the hell out of him. I, I feel like Deb is well. She, she's obviously was suspicious that he wouldn't do what she asked, which is get rid of her in some way. I'm sure she either meant kill or just like make her leave Miami, pretty much get her out of their life, but we saw her tailing them and it just it doesn't it doesn't seem like a good feeling to me she put a gps tracker on his car <laughs> yeah a high tech one that she got from elway in his private well their their firm i think deborah i don't know you'll you'll correct me if i'm wrong i think that a lot of it is from jealousy and not really from absolute hatred cuz i don't i don't feel like i mean deb you've done worse things than poison someone to make them pass out Dexter, you M99 people, like, on the daily. <laughs> H Hannah wasn't intending to kill Deborah two seasons ago. Hannah just gave her, uh, poisoned her water with the too much of the antidepressant so she would pass out. She didn't know she'd be driving. Like, it wasn't an intentional thing to kill her. So I really think it's more jealousy. <laughs> I think it's definitely a lot jealousy, but to have to, like, like Deb said, you know, I just don't want to worry about every cup of coffee that I drink, like whether or not it's going to be drugged. To have to worry about everything that you put in your mouth, like is this going to be the the bite <laughs> of Death. settle down? <laughs> yeah, is this going to be you know the the bite of whatever steak? Somebody said steaks yeah. that I have that you know that's puts me kill, down, yeah. that kills me, that whatever you know that's that's a rough way to live. What's what's actually interesting too is I, I'm reminded of last couple of seasons where obviously we knew that uh, Deb had some like feelings for Dexter. So Vogel, do she doesn't know that, right? So Deb's giving her all this reasoning behind, oh, I don't want to be poisoned. Like, I don't want to worry. Like you said, Anna, mm -hmm. I don't want to worry about the next steak I eat or the next cup of coffee I drink to be poisoned. And uh, if Vogel knew the whole story, she would probably put it together and be like, but are you sure that you're not really thinking about your previous feelings of Dexter? <laughs> so, Dexter, do you, do you really love him, or is it just he helps you, and that's why you love? I, I God, I. We're doing bad uh, British accents here on AfterBuzz TV. A Fogel. AfterBuzz exclusive bad yeah, British accents. Seriously, yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> can we just can we just forget that Deborah like had that whole incestuous <laughs> feeling towards that? Can we just take that and put a pin in it? Let's do that. <laughs> can we just get rid of that? Put a post it up. That never happened. <laughs> No, it, it's never going to go away. And it's kind I of know. Like, it's kind of like, even if it like wasn't your sister, but like you said something to somebody like, hey, I have like a major crush on you, and they like don't return it, Ooh. but you have to see them every year at Thanksgiving or something. It's just uh, like not ever going to go away. It's like, I wonder if the writers ever think that. Like, they're like, I wonder if we can go back in time to that episode where we made Deb love Dexter <laughs> and just not have that happen. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I feel like man. it just it just changes their relationship so much, and it's so different from what it was before that epiphany that didn't really make sense to begin with, 
that it really kind of put them into a box with what they can do with their characters. It, does that make sense to yeah, you guys? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think you're right. It does. Well, let's move on from that. Yeah. <laughs> and let's talk about Quinn and Jamie, <laughs> another relationship that's kind of messed up a little bit. The whole time that Jamie was sitting down with Quinn, that it just that was the only scene like that that they had together that was really relevant, right? That was I think that was the only scene in this episode. Anyway, so Quinn is manipulative too. He he's manipulative in a way, I guess, with with Batista, but I feel like Jamie's manipulating him because she wants him to make a decision. Like, well, this is like what many women do, right? Hey, like, I want to see how much he cares about me. I want to move in with him. This is going to be us making a, a commitment, which is the one-year lease is a big commitment for her. Am I right? Ah, that's one year. <laughs> oh, you can't get out of that. <laughs> she, has to, she has to put up with him talking about Deb all the time. They obviously oh. haven't lived in L.A. They don't know you can just walk out of a lease. No, I'm just kidding. But... I don't like, Quinn always throws like these underhanded blows, and we see it this episode, we saw it last episode too, with um, when they're at her birthday party and he kind of, well I guess he didn't do it intentionally, but pissed off Amy, I mean Jamie, I'm, it's hard, with, with telling him that he's not Sergeant. Yeah. Like, couldn't have kept that on the wraps. That kind of makes her puts her against Batista. And now he's pitting Batista against her again, because he's not going to like the fact that they're moving in together. And he doesn't really want to move in with her. That's what I think is kind of the messed up part of it. It is. The, the expression that was on his face the whole time was just like, I'm not digging this. Yeah. It's kind of spiteful towards Batista to do something like that. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, we're moving in together. And now she's going to find out through Batista that, he, that he's okay with moving in together, not through Quinn himself, which is just going to stress things with Quinn and Jamie. Why didn't you tell me yourself? You tell my brother before me, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to go hang out with Dexter. But... And the only reason that he, he did that underhanded blow to Batista was because he's pissed that Batista didn't uh, support him against Zachary Hamilton. Well, Batista's going so political. These guys are partners. <laughs> these guys are freaking partners. Like, they had each other's backs, like, all these seasons, except for the one time Quinn decided to, like, screw a lot of stuff over. But, I mean, they had each other's backs, and now he's in this position. Yeah, he's in this position. He gives the job to somebody else after pushing him into it. It's like, here, I, I don't, I don't like that candy. Okay, here's that. I'm gonna take it away from you. It's, don't make someone want something, then take it away from them. Carrot or the stick, man. Yeah, it's. But you know what this? Yeah, man. <laughs> this man. <laughs> this relationship right now that we're talking about with, uh, with Batista and Quinn totally reminds me. I don't know why, but it's like it's vaguely reminiscent of uh, La Guerta and Deb. Kind of like you know how like they're, they're, there's the lieutenant at the top, and then she has this detective that she kind of likes. Well, they, you know, obviously Batista and Quinn are a lot closer, but it's kind of like now there's antagonism because they there's one guy that's up in the brass, and the other person's like down in the you know foot soldier. I I think I I I think there is something that's reminiscent about it. I don't think it's the same, but yeah, there were things that Deb like strongly believed in, and she was like, I'm telling you, this is the guy, and and would get really upset when LaGuerta wouldn't back her up. So, yeah, I mean, they're, they're shades of, of same. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't, I just, I don't like it in that it's not even a gut feeling. It's, like, so ridiculously freaking obvious that Zach is the guy who bludgeoned her. Yeah. I mean, it's really, like, they didn't even investigate a studio. They didn't, like, investigate the kid at all because of his father's connections, of course. But really... Like, this is the creepy kid from across the pool looking looking at everybody. This is the cr kid who's, like, trying to get behind the crime scene tape and take pictures. I mean, this episode also showed us that Zach is obviously so unstable. Dexter doesn't do stuff like banging on the door about, like that. No. And that was that was kind of interesting because the sound effects were the same for, like, half of the door the <laughs> knocks. I was like, oh, they ADR'd that. But it's just, it really irks me that Dexter let him off the table still. And it irks me that Batista's not supporting Quinn when it's so obvious. Yeah, true that. Well, hey, he just wants to keep his lieutenant position. He wants to listen to the deputy chief. La, 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 la. Uh, let's move on to Elway and Deb really quickly. Can I say one more thing about Quinn? Do that. It's, it's sad that he's so flawed because he is a good detective. Because these hunches that he has on a lot of these cases. They're good. They're really good. Especially like he he's kind of the he's closer He's the closest since dokes to knowing who Dexter really is and 
of course he went about a different way and like not getting locked up and blown to hell but i mean he's the closest since that he's got good hunches and batista from working with him should know that well enough that he's not going to chase his tail around if he doesn't think it's really a good lead unless he's like dating a stripper but see he's got his flaws he does anyway anyway elway and deb so they didn't have they only had a couple of scenes together all you know all of them were most of them were innocuous except for the first one together which was so interesting out of left field out of left field this guy has been the nicest dude the whole season and then we he he blows up on deb and he he calls her a bitch right yeah uh, what did he you says guys a, he uses the f word like he's a <laughs> fucking bitch like seriously he goes for it yeah he he did it but and and that's the way she's been treating him you know obviously but uh she did you know she did raise a couple of good points because in, in that scene where she said like oh i feel uncomfortable now this was the first time we see her kind of even though she was being a bitch in that scene it was really being submissive and she just didn't want to be messed with you know she was just doing her own thing using her resources yeah sure they're his resources but she he asks a lot from her and she does work her ass off i feel Anna. well yes um uh... I think there's probably a better way to address your boss uh, than you're always doing this and get away from me. And <laughs> like, I just feel like Deb maybe doesn't always um, act professionally. Well, right. <laughs> she never does that. Uh, Coming to work hungover. And all of those things. And I feel like Elway has given her a lot of room and right, given her, you know, that uh, Dexter sponsored or sponsored for Dexter juice whatever the energy like, drinks yeah ele electrolytes uh but so i feel like she's had a lot of room and yes she has helped and yes she's worked her butt off but uh you know there's a certain way that you speak to your boss and that is not it true that so maybe a little bit i might be pulling at straws here for comparisons but um what's his name Miles Kastner. Kastner. That's what I, I was looking for. Kastner. I knew it was Miles. Miles Kastner and Hannah, comparatively to Elway and Deb. Hmm. Like Miles takes in Hannah, gives her everything she needs, lifts her off when she's crazy, and kind of tries to get her back on her feet. But at the same time, he wants her to be her, his, and freaks out when Dexter comes into the picture. Okay. Now we have Elway takes Deb in off her feet while she's freaking out, kind of tries to settle her down, lets her have so much slack. It's a little different, but it's still the same kind of prison because he gets so furious when he when he, she gets hit on by the old friend. He That's gets right. furious at that. Yeah. And he also is pissed off when she he finds out she's sleeping with that drug dealer guy. And even this episode, he kind of hits that snapping point and turn, he were, Miles reminded me of him in that scene. Like, where he was pissed off. He, he was at that point to have hitting her. That's a fair comparison, and I feel like we will see more of Elway in the coming episodes. Like, he, we, the whole El Sapo thing has totally dropped off the face of this season, and I feel like it's gonna, something's gonna come back about that in the next few episodes. We're gonna find out that Elway is dirty somehow, and right now, he, other than the, that outburst, he was clean as a whistle. Yeah, speaking of that, did, I'm sorry, I can't remember. What happened with the jewels? Uh, they just went missing. Like, nobody knows where the jewels are. Okay. Uh, nothing <laughs> followed up. Dexter replaced Deb's gun. Yeah. But nothing really followed up with who actually shot El Sapo. Yes. So we still don't know who actually shot El Sapo, because that's when Deb went all <laughs> crazy on us and was like, Ah, I killed him. <laughs> so <they're laughs> wow, that sounded like you threw your voice. <laughs> What? That was a good one. That sounded like you threw your voice. Like, it just did not sound like it came out of your mouth at all. <laughs> good one. <laughs> yeah. What were you laughing about, Anna? No, I was just laughing because they were, like, introducing so many new storylines, <laughs> but, like, there's so many loose ends. Like, is it all going to come together, like, 21 Graham style? Or, I, I don't know, just... It, the, the worst part, I like... I love Dexter so much, like the show. I love the show so much. But watching this season is reminding me of the last season of American Horror Story. And mm. I was watching that, and I liked it. And I really loved the first season. I really liked the second one. But watching it, I see all too many storylines opening up and expanding and expanding and expanding. And they need to end them somehow to focus on the other things. 
and it just becomes so unsatisfying it's, as the, the ways yeah. they end them. And I'm this episode I was watching. I was like, so many things are going on right now, it's like and I'm so fearful. I'm so fearful of how they're going to end them. And then when I saw Miles already dead, and I see like not really too much interesting going on with Hannah, I'm I'm kind of afraid. It reminds me of a daytime soap opera a little bit. Yeah. It's getting to that point. Yeah, well, it's kind of like, why did they even need to bring Miles on? Just bring Hannah back. She can explain, I got married, and then I killed him, or whatever. I got married, that's how I got my new identity. She can explain that later. We don't, did you really need to bring him on? Did you really, did we really need this kill scene? Did we, you know, just, I just feel like, and maybe we will, maybe we'll find out later why we needed that kill scene, but uh, I just, yeah, I feel like they keep opening up and introducing characters and... It's a lot. It's just when you have an arc with a character, and then that char that arc closes, and we were I was fairly satisfied with how the Hannah arc closed two seasons ago. I was like, okay, that's cool with me. But now she's back, and I'm not really... The scene in the greenhouse, it was not electrifying. Agreed. Every scene in the greenhouse with Hannah and Dexter in her season was like, oh my god. It was like that was her setting, her place. Exactly. And, and now, it was always good every time. And I see what they were trying to do with it's dilapidated now. It's it's kind of a metaphor for their relationship in that she's neglecting it and it went off and all the flowers are dead now. Like their love is dead now. But then it's coming back. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, it's a filming metaphor that they were doing. And I liked it. But at the same time, there was no oomph. oomph. Yeah, there was no oomph in that scene. Yeah. Let's move on a little bit because we're running out of time uh, to Masuka and Nikki. And let's just touch on that. There wasn't very much there other than we find out. She gives an allusion to it right at the beginning of the episode. Oh, I work at the sports bar. And right away, Stephen. You yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got to say, though, when I was introduced to her character, I really was not expecting to see her topless this season at all. Neither was I. Like, it really was out of left field. And I mean, I understand where they're going with it. But at the same time, I don't have any idea where they're going with it. Because we think we're, she's a gold digger. She gives, like, all these signs that she's a gold digger and then turns down the money, and now she's working in a strip, uh, topless bar. And she even turns... A restaurant. A restaurant. Yeah, that was funny. And she even turns down a possible part-time job that Masuka's giving her at the department. And I can't fault her for that. I mean, honestly, she's at a restaurant. She probably makes a lot. Yeah. Like, a lot. Like, I'm surprised that Masuka looked into her past and it was $5,000. It really seems like she could make $5,000 there in probably a month. Like, easily. You know what? I don't think that was her complete debt. He said, I'm sure it won't cover all your stuff, but it's a start. Okay. I think that's what he mentioned when he gave that check to her. And we're probably going to find out what the hell it is in the next few episodes. Like, what is what did put her in this much debt? What's the yeah. deal with that? And this is one of those storylines that's just there and the, it really has not very much significance this is the first time we've focused on masuka this much in his personal life well i think that exactly but i think masuka deserves a storyline in, in the final season it, he's a lovable character and and i think universally loved uh i love masuka as much as everyone else loves masuka but it's a waste of time in a series in a season that's supposed to be the last thing agreed uh, that's supposed to be like every episode blows your mind it's really not blowing my mind. And I I think this would be great as like a little web series to have in tune with the show to give more. But unless this ties up with something more interesting than, oh, it's my daughter and she has debt because of this, I'm gonna be disappointed. It's it's Big Papa's again. It's Batista and Big Papa's again. It's really like- Yeah, it didn't go anywhere. Yeah, it's like, okay, I really enjoyed getting to know Batista more. Next. <laughs> well, speaking of next, we have to move on to our news and gossip real fast. Yes, we will move on to news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. Exploding with news. Kablamo! So, uh, at show underscore Dexter tweets, don't miss Michael C. Hall, Scott Buck, and more on a special Dexter episode of at Sundance Channel's hashtag writer's room tomorrow. Check lo local listings. So, uh, that should be interesting to have a little bit different perspective, have them talk about the last season some more, maybe some insight into the show. That'll be nice to check out. Unfortunately, I don't have cable, so I don't think I'll be able to see it unless someone posts it on YouTube. Yeah, I'll probably be out there. <laughs> uh, Let's see, we got uh, the writer's room. Yeah, if you guys want to check it out, uh, it's um, it's at, 
Well, you just uh, click on the hashtag there, Writers Room, and it goes to BBC's Writers Room Twitter if you want to give them a follow. Uh, we got some interesting comments from some of our fans. Uh, the most interesting one that was the most liked on our YouTube channel was from More Than Hijab. She, she comments, Dexter mentions the only good thing that he has done is having Harrison, and Harrison seems to be the only one to make Dex truly feel remorseful over his wrongdoings. Dex promised himself he wouldn't be like his father Harry, uh, or that he wanted to be him, uh, him to be. Uh, plus, he is always worried that Harrison shows signs of a sociopath, like lying. I, I think Dexter would. Fall, Dexter's fall would largely be due to efforts to save Harrison from the inevitable future as a son of a serial killer turning out to be uh, or turning out to be one himself. So uh, that's that was a really popular comment on our YouTube channel this week. Uh, thank you for your comment more than hijab. And Speaking of Harrison, by the way, remember, yeah. I thought it was also another dig that Deb was jealous of Hannah in that Harrison won't even stop watching the TV to come and say hello to her, but as soon as he hears the word Hannah, he runs over there and he's like, ooh, Hannah's coming back? Yeah, that, that was a really good observation, Steven. So, is that it for news? I think that's it for news. Let's get into predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Dexter will kill Zack next episode, and it might be blamed on Quinn. Who knows? With Quinn being as angry as he was, maybe something stupid will happen, like it, Quinn's like near the scene of the murder, or Quinn gets blood on him again from the murder scene. Um, and I think Matthews is gonna be pissed, and he'll use Quinn as a scapegoat. I think Quinn is gonna be so angry, and he gets angry drunk, and then he's gonna hook up with Nikki. What about Deb? I mean, he might go after Deb again. No, he's gonna marry Deb. <laughs> By the end of the season. <laughs> Is this, is this Just FKM? Kind of that is, that um, is obvious. <laughs> okay, uh, I think that Zach is going to get jealous of the time that Dexter's putting towards Hannah, and I think Zach's going to go after Hannah. I also think Deb's going to be following Hannah, Zach's going to capture him, and then Deb's going to probably kill Zach. Alrighty, well, that about does it for us here at After Buzz TV this week. Um, I don't know about Quinn. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I think him. I think Jamie's gonna find out that his reason for moving in is not genuine, not and genuine. I think they're gonna break up, and he's gonna try to go back to Deb, and Elway is gonna mess with him. Well. Hey guys, thanks for joining us this week. Be sure to join us next week when we're going to discuss uh, Dexter episode 8. If you guys want to give us a follow, hey, you know what? Give me a follow at Sean Austin O on Twitter and Instagram. Or you. Okay, um, I'm on a couple. You can follow me at Couple for Mayor, K O P P E L F O R M A Y O R. Sean and I will also be back in an hour to discuss Ray Donovan. And you can find Sean at Sean Austin O, and you can give him two follows. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. We'll buzz with you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. 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 The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.